Jeff Rowe from Two Hacks Garage. Well, that looked like a whole bunch of greasy, grimy gopher guts right there, didn't it? Well, it was. And in fact, that was just a little tidbit of what I actually did. Now, this video, as you saw in the title, is how to properly clean an engine block. Why didn't I show you everything? Well, to be honest with you guys, this might sound controversial, but I'm doing an engine series on tearing it down, an engine, getting it ready to be built and rebuilt, all that what you're gonna do with it to put it in your hot rod. The correct answer on how to clean an engine block, it's simple, you go to a machine shop. A machine shop's got a hot tank, and that hot tank gets the liquid super hot, which heats this cast iron, combined with the ingredients they use, a lot of them are lye-based, it gets into this cast iron, and it really pulls out all the contaminants. I'm gonna show you here in a second what I mean by that. That being said, on this engine block here, guys, I scrubbed, I scrubbed, I scrubbed, I used pressurized water, I used bore brushes, metal brushes, you name it, oven cleaner, which works really good to degrease this, um, a full strength degreaser. You can get them pretty clean, but in all actuality, what you can't do is you can't get it perfectly clean. If you want to rebuild an engine and you want to do it the right way, the way Jimmy taught me, what you need to do is you really do need to hot tank it. I know that might be controversial for a lot of guys that like to do the backyard bills, but what we're going to do is we're going to show you why you really need to hot tank these engines and what you kind of need to look for in regards to, I don't know, let's say what could fail if you don't clean these properly. Be right back. All right, guys, like I said, in the video at the beginning of this, that was probably once out of, I don't know, 10, 12, 13 times that I scrubbed. I used oven cleaner, full strength degreaser, pressurized water, bore brushes, steel brushes, plastic brushes, you name it, to get into this thing and really clean it. Did a pretty good job, not too shabby, because as you saw before, how nasty and gunky it was, it does look a lot better. But if you can see in here and all that, there is still some contaminants. Yes, you could probably get in there with other smaller brushes, maybe some actual wire wheels and all that, and break that free. However, cast iron is porous, and what will happen is there's still contaminants in here, and it'll start working itself out. What you don't see is all the different passages that are in here for the oil galley and all that, the stuff that's built up in there that you can't get a brush into and scrub all the way. Yeah, I used various bore brushes on this, like this. I know everyone knows what this is used for. It's actually a really good tool for this. In fact, when you combine it with the different, <laughs> different attachments for it, like I did, you can get in there and scrub pretty well. But you know what, guys? I scrubbed really well in these areas, and there's still some leftover contamination. Cast iron's porous. This stuff really builds in. Mind you, this engine's 50 years old, so you really want to make sure it's clean. I'm going to show you a couple things on that here in a minute, why I say you need to go to a machine shop. But yeah, guys, all this contamination and gunk that's built in there, once that starts breaking itself free, once you rebuild this, you know what, guys? That's going to go down, and it could clog up oil passages, get down in there, and contaminate everything else. So with that, guys, I'm going to show you what I mean, why you need to go to a machine shop and actually use a hot tank. I'll be right back. First off, real quick, guys, I know in the last video, I haven't shown you what I did here. Uh, last video is all nice and gunky. Uh, a couple steps I didn't show you in the teardown process is removing freeze plugs. They all have them here. You know what, guys, there's a million videos out there on how to re remove them. Figured I didn't have to show you. But a good way to do this is when you have one of these in there, a mallet and a socket, and you want to hit, and you want to try to rotate it like this. I always grab it with a set of big pliers and pull it out. If this does fall down in here, you know what guys, you can actually fish them out because I had a bunch of these actually do that. See that nastiness? Well, there's a reason why there's nastiness. All these water jackets in here, they're full of corrosion. I actually sprayed a bunch of different chemicals in here to clean it up, but as you can see, well, there is still a bunch of junk in there. See it right there, you can see it in there, and you can see it in there. In between the cylinders and behind it, there's also going to be a whole lot more where you can't get in there and scrub, where you can't get in there and have a whole lot of hot pressure water behind that. So again, guys, this is just another reason I say you need to take it and get it hot tanked to get all that out. This is your main feed section of your, coolant, of your cooling, and you really, really, really don't want any of this gunk in there. What's going to happen is it's going to flow, it's going to get in your radiator, and it's going to plug it. By the way, guys... 
The other step on this is there's always a lot of plugs everywhere in these. I did take those out. That's very simple. When I say down to a bare block, that's removing all your plugs, your oil galley plugs, any plugs in the front, which we're going to talk about later, and your freeze plugs. You really do want to get this down to a bare block. All right, so here's another reason why I say you want to go and go to a machine shop. It's pretty simple, guys. Like I said, you saw how contaminants stayed on the outside. There's still some in here here. You really can't get a brush into, and frankly, a lot of that's baked into the cast iron. So I want to show you something here. I have used bore brushes. I have used different cleaners, different degreasers, you name it, and really, really scrubbed on this. Mind you, you're rebuilding an engine. You start putting different chemicals and cleaners to it, you are going to break stuff free. Well, tell you what. I went through here, I don't know how many times, look at that, grossness. You're going to find that in every single hole. Mind you, these are feed holes for your main bearings. And also it goes the other way for your cam bearings. So let's take a look at that again. All these are going to different areas to feed for oil. Well, let's check that out. Another one. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. Guys, you really need to go to a machine shop and you really need to get these hot tanks. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me and say, oh, you can get that clean. You can get that clean. You just keep trying. I'm telling you how to do it the right way based upon how I was taught. And the way I was taught is, is to get the majority of the heavy gunk off you can, get it down to a bare block, and take it to a machine shop. That, guys, right there is your best bet. Why not spend... The 30, 50, 100 bucks to go to a reputable machine shop and get all that clean. Get it all baked out, get it all nice and clean. So you know when you get it back, guess what guys? All the holes in here that feed oil everywhere are clean. One quick thing guys, one thing I haven't done 100% yet. This is a representation engine of what I'm gonna be doing. You really do need to make sure all the gasket stuff is off of here. I'm gonna do that. I should have done that a little bit better. I uh, got a whole bunch of it on there. The other thing is, is when you go through this, you can still see some water weeping out. Um, I did go through here with compressed air and I did blow out all the holes. Right now, that's not going to matter. I'm going to explain that in another video. And why? Because there is actually another step that I do before I go to a machine shop to have things hot tanked. But this is an oil feed hole here. Your main two oil galley holes. And I really, really rammed a bunch of rods through that with everything. And guys... Look at that. That's disgusting. That's gross. Seriously, the right way, like I said in the title, the right way to correctly clean an engine block, go to a machine shop. Well, guys, I know in this video, it probably looks like I didn't show you anything. Because you know what? To be honest with you, I really didn't. The point of this video is to do the right thing the way I was taught. And in my opinion, the right thing when cleaning an engine block is one, what I showed you a small tidbit of at the beginning, after you make sure your freeze plugs are out, all the oil galley plugs are out, all the drain hole plugs are out, after all your gasket surfaces are out, is to get in there and degrease it. Clean off all the heavy stuff you can, go through all the holes that you can, oil feed holes, get those clean, go through the water jackets with you know some pressurized water. Like I said, you know what guys, to clean all this, I'm not using anything special. I'm using some oven cleaner, some degreaser. You know what? some brushes, steel, some plastic ones, small, large, whatever. And the point is, is I'm going through here and I'm getting all the heavy contaminants off. Because the whole thing is, like I said, I want to do this the right way. And in my opinion, the right way is to actually have one of these hot tanked. It really gets into that cast iron, gets into every little nook and cranny, and it really just eats all that greasy, grimy gopher guts out of there to make sure this engine block is clean the proper way when ready to assemble it. You got a whole lot of money and time wrapped up into one of these engines. And you know what? When that happens, you don't want to half-ass anything. And if you do that, and if you don't clean these properly, well, see all these holes here? Those feed bearings. You got contaminants broken loose because when you were cleaning, well, that's what's going to happen. It could start, you know, blocking all those little passages. You don't want to wipe out a cam. You don't want to wipe out a main bearing. You don't want to wipe out a rod journal bearing. So guess what, guys? Go to a machine shop get it hot tanked, and get it cleaned. Well, tell you what, guys, that was the point of the video. That being said, there is another few steps that I do before I go to a machine shop. 
most reputable machine shops, what they're going to do, even though they're going to hot tank it, they're going to go through and chase all the threads to make sure to get the contaminants out of there. That's important when you go back down to torquing bolts. But just to make sure, I always go ahead and take care of that myself. And before I go to the machine shop, and the other step I do, I'm not going to tell you what it is now, because in another video, I'm going to show you another cleaning step that you can do that helps remove rust. With that, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of how to tear an engine down to get ready to be rebuilt. Like I said, didn't really show you anything because I didn't have to. The correct way to clean an engine block, and I'll stand by it, is go to machine shop and have it hot tanked. With that, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.